Hello, everybody. I thought since I was able to record things again, I might as well record some footage of a project that I did for a hyperfiction class, I guess. I don't know. It's a, I basically made a game for a class about literature and got away with it. So, yeah, we called it The Last Chapter. Let me turn the volume down on the game a little bit. Called it The Last Chapter because it's about books, obviously, being a literature class. Uh, you want to read the information on here? It's a high perfection we did. More like I did it and I had some people help me because I did all of the game programming and everything. Uh, anyway. The game is about a young man named Caucasian male, blah, blah, blah. If you want to read that, you can. And so I did the programming. I did game assets. I never got my storyline sequence into it because I was too busy making everybody else's. And that's when I learned programming is not something that you should cram. Because I had to pull all-nighters twice just to get it. I mean, the engine was there, I just had to make all the stuff in it, so. Zach Coolish did all the still frame artwork, like the drawings, the hand-drawn ones. You'll, you'll see those in a minute. And then there's a whole sequence with the princess in the village, which you'll also see. The concept was done by our third partner, Christina. On. So, to get into the game, you click on the book. Walk around. Here's a little guy. So I made all the sprites. I actually ripped, uh, I didn't rip, but I hijacked the grass and the trees from projects that I had done before. So I didn't have to make those again. I did draw the library with basically MS Paint. That's before I, I had re-downloaded GIMP into this machine. So it, you can go into the library. And inside the library, it's kind of empty. Because I didn't have a lot of time to fill it up. But, here are these trees, I had to draw those, I didn't have to, I just did, I wanted to, I wanted to have trees, so I drew some trees, it took me like 20 minutes. This book is titled Of Yonder, uh, to open a book, either you mouse over it and click on it, and you can read it, and you click on, it on the outside of it to get it to go away, it's kind of like mist, in the way that it works with the reading. Um, and this, this symbol over here is a link. If you touch that or click on it, then you'll be transported into the world of the book. So again, sort of like mist. If, a, if you mouse over a book and it does not open for you, then you have to walk up to it and press the space bar. And this one's called The Concrete. You can read that if you want to. I wrote this one. It was going to be the introduction book or the link into my storyline sequence, which I never got finished. So if you wanted to read that, you can pause the screens. And this link is not finished. It says improper link. It's because I never built the world that this book links into. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. And then this book down here is just uh, basically a filler. It's just kind of a silly little story I kind of wrote. I just wanted to write stuff that sounded weird and interesting just to have some stuff. Because being a hyperfiction is supposed to be heavy on the fiction and the writing, so I didn't want to get disqualified on the basis of being too much like a game. Which it is. But that's okay, because it, it blew our teacher away. And uh, every every other classmate I had in there, um, every time we presented, we all had to do a presentation at the end of the class. And the three questions we were supposed to ask each other was, number one, what did you like or what... what what did you like or what did you uh, appreciate? What did, number two, what did you learn? And number three was what one question you wanted to ask the presenters. And basically on every single one of those cards that we got from our classmates was, how did you do this? That was our, that was our question. They want to know, how did we do it? And how long does it take to make something like this? And we didn't respond to those questions. That was just something we received on note cards. But my response to the question of how long it takes would be depends on your ninja level. I don't know. I guess ninjas program things. This thing that I'm walking around here is a wizard's flower. 
and that links into my friend Zach's story sequence and you'll get to see it's 90% well it's actually 100% uh, made out of his hand-drawn frames so if I use my use key my spacebar on this we activate his story sequence and I should have used probably maybe orange text here to make it more visible but I didn't I made it blue so he drew his like a comic book you I made it so that you click, he actually Facebooked me this uh, dialogue down here, and I put it into the game. So every time you click, it goes to the next sequence of words, or the next string. And then after a certain number of strings, I had it switch to the next frame. And you'll see that here. So now he's got the bird talking to him, and he's starting to fly. And here's the bird again. So. I don't know, it's probably kind of hard to read. If you want me to, I can annotate it. Or if I think it doesn't look good, I'll annotate it in the video. So, there's a couple more frames to this one. Now, originally, Zach did want to have three choices, three different choices, I think. But I never had time to implement them, and I couldn't figure out exactly which frames he wanted me to use for each choice. And the three that he wanted was, at this point, um, let's see, okay, the bird fell from the sky, and saying, if I lead, you will follow, and at this point, the character was supposed to be able to d choose whether or not he wants to believe in the bird and fall safely, or if he wants to not believe and f fall down and die, or uh, wake up and discover it was all a dream or hallucination or something, but... I only implemented the one where he falls and he wakes up, or he doesn't wake up, he just gets up. So, and then the sequence ends and you find yourself in the upper right corner of the map, right next to the library. So you, you, if you wanted to, you could do it all over again. So now let's go into the library. This is, like I said, where you would link into my storyline if it was there. You go to the end, you click the link, but it's not there. It doesn't exist. So let's go to Of Yonder. In a clearing beyond the trees of this forest was founded a village which stands still to this day. Blah, 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 blah. Traveler wrote this note about it. Okay, let's click the link. Okay, then Zach drew this. All these frames, I filled them in with black in the background in GIMP. And I made a small... Uh, little narrative down here in text to explain kind of what the character is supposed to be feeling as he gets sucked into the book and then whoosh now you're in the world so it's kind of like a linking book from mist so you can see you walk around there's a path and there's this little sign that said castle or village castles that way village is to the east and i kind of like how this sign turned out because it's just a sprite a single sprite but I like how it turned out to be nice and 2.5D. It's pretty sweet looking. So let's go to the village, see what the villagers have to say. Why they look like little gnomes here. So here's here's this guy, what's he gonna say? Oh, he's coming to us. Oh they're shrunken. I can tell. And they want me to help them get unshrunk. Okay. Kill the witch. She shrunk them. Can I go in here? Nope. kind of silly for me to pretend like I don't know the mechanics of my own game, but people always want to find out if they can go in these houses, so I figured I'd test it just to show that you can't. You can't go in their houses, because that's wrong. It's wrong. It's not right. <coughs> I can't do that voice for long. So here's Castle. And up on the tassel is the witch. And you can't get to her because she's on the castle. So let's let's go under, or not under, in in the castle. In the castle. Here's floor one, number one. You see, there's a staircase on the left. I kind of did that cheaply with like a repeated gradient, and a, a diary of some sort. Some sort. And what this describes is apparently this is somebody who's fixing the taxes. So, I guess this is somebody with authority, and looks like she's been cursed. Yeah, 
she's be cursed she can no longer speak but to find she did mention that okay there's a witch that mentioned that's a spell to cure her speech impediment or not being able to speak could be found in one of the few tomes scattered throughout the forest but she didn't feel like going to get it oh well so let's see who's up here upstairs why it's the princess let's talk to her oh no she cannot speak oh darn anyway there's a ladder up here or something and eh, does not go anywhere so I had to draw all this in like I had six hours to do this whole sequence that I've started a few minutes ago so now we go out of the castle and there actually are um, a couple choices you can make in this game here's the witch Oh, I can get up here, sneak behind the banisters, or the, the, I don't know, the battlements, that's what the word is. Go up through the forest, and this is the way you're supposed to come if you're looking for the tomes that the diary was talking about. There's two books here. You see this one first? What is this one? Witchbane. Yeah, let's hold off on that. It sounds like it's going to kill the witch's mutism. That sounds like it's related to the princess not being able to speak, so here's this big long chant and okay that was kind of weird hold off on that let's see if the princess can talk again ah. so I like how the shadow works on the player it's part of one sprite but uh, I got the shadow to get on the player like ooh, I'm gonna I know this is kind of annoy people but Here's this shadow here. Put the lighting in as just an overlay. So it's the whole sprite with the light and the shadow there. Overlaid on top of the player and the scene there. It's kind of like a light map. So can you speak? Oh yes, she can speak. I broke the curse. So reading that mutism tone broke the curse on her. Not, not being able to speak. Oh, don't break the curse on the villagers. What do I need to know about them? They're evil giants whose presence became threatening to even me okay she hired a, a witch to curse them she made them small okay so the witch that's on top of the castle is the one that shrunk them okay and I guess she needs help from the witch and from me to kill the people okay we can go up on top of the castle to find the witch the hatch unlocked the ladder works yes takes us to the witch and the witch says did you manage to solve the mystery of our lady's missing voice I am proud in fact you know that's that's very nice of you I, oh I bet you're not because you all you want to do is just kill a bunch of village people oh they hired somebody who'd they hire yeah I bet you won't say I bet you won't say wink what incantation? I can, I can do it. In fire, they all burn and stuff. Hmm. Interesting sounding. Oh really? Oh really? I bet something did. But before I visit the villagers, let's go find out what this um, witchbane tome is like. What's that all about? Walking up, getting caught in the trees. I kind of regret making the passage so small to get up here. Because it's kind of hard. Witch Bane. Warning, this book kills all the witches. Do not read this book unless you intend to kill all witches. Well, actually, I kind of did just read the book. And I, I am rather proud of myself. Thank you very much. I can read. And that is not a small... Oh my goodness. It's not a small issue to be able to read. It's a big deal. You know, there's many people who can't read. So, the witch is dead. Oh, I was going to sing a little Munchkin song, but I can't remember how it goes. I was going to say, Ding Dong, the witch is dead. Is that it? I can't remember. So, are you proud of me? Are you proud of me? How could you have done that? I, I read a book, and it was like, Oh, the witches are dead. They're loose. 
They're not gonna, they're not gonna stomp on me, I'm their friend. I just saved them. Whatever. Well, let's see if the witch has anything to say. She's dead. I wanna go look at her corpse, go smell it. Ah, uh, no, it's locked. So, let's go take a look at our village people friends and see what kind of a mean bounty they have to offer us. I mean, after all, we did save them from a witch and a princess that was trying to murder all of them. Go run this awesome little sign. Whee! No, oh, they're still small. What the heck is wrong with that? Here's this guy. Come here, talk to me. Yeah, I bet you are. Oh my goodness! 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 I got squished by a giant and died. That's not very nice. Okay. Wow, it takes me all the way back to the beginning. That kind of sucks. Okay. Yeah, starts completely over. I guess I should have killed the village people. Let's warp back into there. I can click to skip this. There we go. Uh, yep, they're back to small. I don't really need to talk to them now because I already know that they just need me to kill the witch. Not going to do it this time. Nope. Hello, witch. Sorry, I killed you. You should have listened. Uh. Okay. No, not reading that one. Mutism, okay. We read it. Now the princess should be cured. So, if I go speak to the princess, let's see, maybe she remembers me. Hello princess, once again it is I. Nope. You don't really remember me anything. You don't got anything new to say. So let's talk to the witch, learn the incantation in fire, they all burn and stuff. Okay. You think you felt something. Well, let's go visit with the village people. No, nope, you're just gonna say the same stupid thing. Even though I already learned the incantation. Uh, I burped. That was me burping. That was me releasing gas from the inside of my stomach. That's where I digest food. That's where I turn food into poop. I'm a tube. Built specifically for the purpose of turning perfectly good animals and plants into poop. That's my purpose. Okay, they're not burning. What's going on? What have you done? Why did you do this? Do what? Oh my goodness! They're on fire! What do I do? Oh, well, they vanished. Okay. Oh. Okay. Alright, so that's what the incantation does, I guess. So, it'll, I guess it only applies if you go around them. Whatever. So, the people are taken care of. Let's see if the witch has anything to say about that. Maybe she's got more spells for me to try out. Maybe, she, ooh, maybe I can kill a princess and take over. But of course, I guess that's not really, that wouldn't do me any good because there's no more people to rule over except for the witch. I, could, I guess I can make her my slave though. Good, the spell worked. Yes, it did. See the princess about getting a reward. I bet you would. I'm gonna get a cut. Get a cut of your pay, witch. Oh, wow. She's thanking me for killing all of her underling, underlings. Oh, well, yeah, that totally justifies it. I hate tax evaders. They're so arrogant and stupid and... There is no money. What? I'm this close to burning you to death with my voice. Oh, yeah, you better have something. You couldn't figure out... I bet you couldn't. You know why? Because you're dumb. And your face is all... Your face is like... All woman and... Like... Like you don't know things. That my ex expertise. Mysterious book. It's not that mysterious. Oh my goodness. What the heck is this? And rolled words again here. That doesn't say anything. I just wrote a bunch of gibberish. So. Mysterious book. Ah, where is it taking me? Straight back to the library. That's nice. So yeah, the main fun things are, yeah, if you want to read the books, just pause it. I'll go through all the pages one more time, I know I've already done it, and let's 
book is all weird. It has references to some of the other stories. This one I basically just tried to convey a very basic idea from any, I guess, if you have any philosophical background, you'll know what the, what the idea is, but I tried to just write it in a very convoluted and obfuscated way to make it seem like I was smart. And I think it worked on most people, because they wouldn't fill up, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages of words. Most people in my class, at least, they wouldn't take that long to convey that point. So I think that's a success on my part for being overly fancy or something. But that is the extent of the game. I might at some date choose to expand it and make my storyline part of the game finally because I think I've earned it. Having been the one who put this all together uh, with the... I actually do have some hand-drawn pr um, prints from Zach Cooler concerning my story arc but I never got to use them. There's the character that you'll see in the information, Mephitso. He is, he has his own little drawing, like the princess, except he's a guy, obviously. Well, maybe not so obvious, but you never get to see him yet, because I didn't put him in yet. But I might do that at a later date. You'll have a couple of choices to do then. And if I ever update this, I will make another video showing you my story arc, of course. Since it's going to be 90% dialogue, it might not be that fascinating, and I could just link to the executable, which I might do sometime later. You could, and I might, I don't know. But anyway, that's all the stuff there is so far in this one. So, I still have to get caught up on Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. I recently learned, with my internet connection disconnected for the night, not to return until morning that I need to install Doom 3 first before I can start playing Resurrection of Evil, which I can't do tonight. That makes me sad, so I'll just start tomorrow, pick it up, give me a couple days, I'll be ready to go. Anyway, until then, to end.